This is the Echo Flow Delta II, and this is your next at home emergency preparedness power station. All right, so first off, I've done reviews on Echo Flow stuff before. Let's get the disclosures out of the way. Echo Flow sent this to me for free. They're not paying me any money, and I'm okay with that because this thing is so good that even if I bought it myself, I will be pumping out content in regards to it. In exchange for this, I agreed to give them a review. Now, it's my style of review. They don't get to see it before I post it. Matter of fact, they'll be seeing this the first time when you guys see this as well. If you're a channel member, you saw this before anybody. So consider becoming a channel member so you can uh, see this type of content earlier than most. But why do I like Echo Flow so much? I've talked about the Echo Flow River 2 Pro. I've talked about the Echo Flow River 2. Now we're talking about the Delta 2. They have some new stuff that they're announcing literally today and it drops next week. This is like one of my best power solutions, power stations when it comes to emergency preparedness that I have in my personal life. I've tried stuff from All Powers, from Togo, from Blue Eddy, from Jackery. This company impresses me the most. It's not all pros, there are cons. But I guess while I tell you about this, let's just make a cup of coffee, shall we? Because uh, I find myself to be a little parched. So we'll plug this up. This is a, uh, is a this thing can handle quite a bit. It is a 10, 24 watt hour capacity on this bad boy. Uh, it can peak up to 2,700 watts. I'm going to boil this water to 188 degrees because that sounds about right. So now we're pumping out eh, 1,100 watts. It's not bad. It's not bad. After I make the cup of coffee, we're also going to vacuum. Matter of fact, let's just turn the vacuum on now. This is my Metabo HPT 36 volt. Vacuum, it runs off of one of these little adaptable power little things that you can buy that goes directly with your battery system. So the vacuum can run off batteries, but in this case, let's run it like this. All right, now we're running at 1,480 watts. We'll keep it there for now. You know what? While I'm vacuuming and making this coffee, I decided I also want to run my bench top grinder at the same time. All right, we're looking pretty good. All right, we're back at almost 1,700 watts. All right, so done with my afternoon tasks. Got a great cup of coffee. And this is not how you would actually use this bad boy. I'm pretty sure you're not going to be using your bitch top grinder running a shop vac or a wet dry back and making a cup of coffee at the same time. That's probably not gonna happen, but let me tell you why this thing is so awesome. It has a huge capacity, in my opinion, at you know, 10, 24 watt hours, I think that's pretty good. It can be expanded with this little port on the side here where you can plug up additional batteries. You can expand this bad boy up to uh, 30, 40, or 3,000 40 watt hours with additional batteries you can buy on their website. It has an internal charger, it just the, the actual AC plug itself, but the actual brick itself is built into this, unlike its competitor Blue Eddy, older Jackeries, stuff like that. So that I like that type of stuff. Six AC outlets, it has the whole shabazz. Why do I like this so much? In an emergency situation, this is the big boy that I use inside the house for powering different things. So I have a smaller 300 watt hour, 350 watt hour, a power station I use to 
to power some of our DC capable type of stuff, emergency radios, charging iPads, charging cell phones, iPads, all that type of stuff, right? This is used for other more important critical things. So I normally would like to charge my refrigerators. You know, I can charge it, you know, four to six hours at a time and then kind of unplug it and let it go for a while. A, a fridge can probably go about 12 hours before you got to toss everything out of there, especially if you're not opening the door a lot. This is used for charging refrigerators. I put my deep freezer in extra cold mode and I can use this off and on to keep the deep freezer going. You know, we take this thing camping, take this thing hunting. This is fantastic in emergency situations. There are cons. Please don't believe this is all pros. It's heavy. I don't know how much it weighs. Specs, I'll put that on the screen how much it weighs. It weighs a lot, okay? I will give them that, that they, they, the future iterations of this probably could be better served with some wheels. And speaking of future iterations, I got to talk to you about what they're going to be dropping very, very soon. Okay, so that's something that could be thought of. I wish all the ports were on one side, okay? So I like the fact that this thing has a lot of ports. I mean, you got six ACs. Only two of the ACs are grounded, though. The rest of them are just a two prong, so that's something that you have to think about as well. But you got the plenty of ACs in here. You have multiple ways to charge this thing. It can be charged with solar, it can be charged with AC, and it can be charged with DC via your car. Now that takes the longest, that take like 11 hours. But if you're rolling down the road and this thing is plugged up in the rear of your vehicle and it's working with your alternator and your battery, this thing will charge on a road trip. So when you get to where you need to go, this thing has got its charge as you go along. So at full MSRP, I do believe it is expensive. Now per watt hour, you know, MSRP on this thing is $999. It has a 1024 watt hour capacity. You're paying a little bit less than a dollar per watt, but right now these things are going easily for 30%, sometimes more off. And at that point, you're now starting to pay, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna do math live. I'm not gonna do math, but well below a dollar per watt hour. And that brings a lot of peace of mind. This is also an emergency power station. So there's a difference between an uninterruptible power station and an emergency power station. This emergency power station, this thing normally, because I like to actually cycle my power stations and stuff like that, this thing actually runs my coffee mess. So I unplugged it from my coffee mess for this review, but it runs my kettle, my grinder, my espresso machine, all the lights around there, my vinyl record player, all that. This kettle by itself always peaks around 1300 watts. My grinder peaks at like 400 watts. My espresso machine, like all this stuff, none of this stuff makes this thing trip. But if I were to lose power, a brownout, a blackout situation, some type of emergency situation, within 30 milliseconds, this thing will notice that it no longer has power being received from the AC input on the rear of this thing, and it immediately will turn on and be become an emergency output or maintain different devices plugged into it. So if you have a CPAP machine that has to be plugged up, there's different versions of the CPAP, but if you have one that needs to be plugged up, perfect for that type of use case in that type of environment. Now this would be kind of big to put bedside. I've done reviews on some of their smaller units which have the same type of capability. So you might want to check that out as well. But one thing I really like this for hands down is the emergency uses when I come to the fridge. I like the warranty, it has a five year warranty which I think is at this point unrivaled or a few of their competitors are starting to, to do that type of stuff as well. Some of these power stations can't power appliances. And what I mean by that is if your fridge runs at 500 watts or 300 watts, right, it has a peak. So you may get yourself a power station thinking, oh, it's going to be great. It's, it's, it's a thousand watt hours. My fridge is 500 watt hours. I can run it for two hours or whatever. But let's say your fridge peaks at 1200 watts when you turn it on so it can get the juices going and get the power going. It's going to trip those power stations left and right. This one has a 2700 boost mode. It has like its X boost mode at like 2200 watts, which I think it make it it can boost longer than the 2700 watts. All sorts of features in this. And one thing is is this thing is barely a year old and they're already innovating and coming out with new stuff. And I can see where they're always trying to make those type of improvements hands down. So what I can say is when it compared this to stuff that's being put out by Anchor in the Solus line, stuff that's being put out by Blue Eddy, stuff that's being put out by Jackery, there's a few minimum things that I need specifically of why I like to mess with only two of these brands I just mentioned, Anchor and Echo Flow. Hands down, they have to be a couple of reasons. Warranty, 
and the app support. The app on this thing is fantastic. They have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capable. I can know exactly what this thing is doing and if I'm on the other side of the world or if I'm inside the house via Bluetooth, I can draw down the power. In other words, this thing can go from zero to 80% in 50 minutes. It can go from zero to 100% in about an hour and 20 minutes. But let's just say, since I don't need to charge that fast, I'm at the house, I can make this thing go from charging 1,000 watts where it would only charge 400 watts, 300 watts, 100 watts, whatever I wanna do, I have full control inside of the app and I like stuff like that. So you have control via the app, you have different ways to slow this thing down. But for me personally, if you're looking for something that can power you in emergency situations, you can also unplug it and take it camping or hunting with you. Or you can do like I did recently where you can take this to a kid's Pop Warner football league or something like that, where we have a kid out there who wants to be a part of Pop Warner but he has this special breathing machine that his mom has to bring. It has to be plugged up. I keep this on the sideline. If we need that breathing machine, he can get breathing treatments. He only plays defense. So he can get breathing treatments while he's on the side and continue to participate within the sports. His mom had nothing that was capable. I like small stuff like that. And oh, by the way, you can charge a ton of stuff while you're at it and make it even more capable as well. So for those small reasons, I like it, but I really like how they're innovating and the things that's coming out very, very soon. Now, the thing that I'm excited about announcing today with Echo Flow, they are announcing the Echo Flow Delta Pro 3, a 4,000 watt hour, 4,000 max output beast that's about to drop. And it's going to be able to do things like run, a, you know, like a two and a half ton a, uh, central AC unit all the way down to your smaller stuff as well. I have a buddy that already has the newest one that's about to drop, and a local surgeon near his town in Montana was having brownout issues where they're always purposely shutting out power in their town to conserve energy for the entire town. He gave them his Echo Flow Delta Pro 3, and they ran their entire surgery unit off of that bad boy for an entire weekend. I think that's pretty impressive. That can be expanded up to 8,000 watts. So this falls kind of like right in the middle of their line when it comes to Echo Flow. Echo Flow has the River Series, which is kind of like their, their good. The better series is the Delta. And then they got the Delta Pros, which are the best. And those things are fantastic when it comes to charging, et cetera, et cetera. I hope to get my hands on one of those soon now if i'm looking for a banger on a budget i like to go with companies like all powers okay and i'll do a review on an all powers unit that's similar capacity to this one soon it is probably 150 dollars cheaper than this one but if it were my money i would go with this one but that all powers unit has a horrible app that's the thing that makes me the least confident in it and it doesn't have the best warranty this is something they're designing in-house they're not white gloving this or oem from another company this is something that they're doing themselves and I like stuff like that. If you've been interested in the Echo Flow Delta 2, what are you some things that you like about it, some things that you hate about it? Do you own one? You're here to just get a little bit of confirmation you made a good purchase. Or if you're interested in this thing, comment down below, interested, and I will heart your message. If this is your first time stopping by, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you a part of the battalion. Hey, make sure you go check out the video I just did in regards to the Nutsack giveaway. You still have time to enter that. That will also be linked in this video, so you can go check that out. Nutsack giving all sorts of stuff away for the Father's Day era and all that good stuff, and I wouldn't want you to miss out on that. If this is not your first time stopping by, well, thank you once again for watching me run my great. It's hot out here. I'm going to finish my coffee in the cool AC. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.